With everything I've got, with everything, Lord, my heart will sing how I love Come on, come on, hallelujah, hallelujah, we thank you, hallelujah, hallelujah. There's a beautiful exchange taking place right now. beautiful exchange Right there from your seat, from the altar, right there wherever you're at. Those watching on the internet, right there from your house, in your car. Come on, right there where you're at, just lift your hand and tell them, Lord, I love you. I love you. Come on, you tell them, Father, I love you. Jesus, I love you. My God. 
A beautiful exchange is taking place in this sanctuary right now. He's exchanging your ashes. He's exchanging somebody's sorrow for a garment of praise. <laughs> He's exchanging somebody's weakness for strength. Just like that young man said Sunday, that he was 14 year old smoking cigarettes at least three packs a day and was set free this past week. His family will not have to pay almost $400 a month just to support. Hallelujah. He's exchanging somebody. Ooh, glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody's hurt. Somebody's pain. <laughs> For joy. My God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise his holy name. Praise Come here, Tana. Come here, Vanessa. Give me a trash can. I want you to exchange it this morning. I'm not going to leave it up here. She brought, yeah, that trash can, any trash can is fine. Just a trash can. Vanessa brought this up. I don't know what it. She knows what it symbolizes, right? She exchanged it. Amen. Amen. She laid it down. Go ahead, sweetie. You throw it away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She. These are all. Tana found. I couldn't even say the names of all, any of them. Do you know the names? Zola. Xanax, Abilify, Lexapro. She said, I found them. And she said, I'm throwing them away. She's, been, she's already been free. But she didn't want to leave that in her house. Jesus exchanged her depression, her anxiety for his joy. Hallelujah. You, can throw, you throw it away, sweetie. You throw it away. Glory. <laughs> My God. You can take that back. We welcome you to Faith Christian Fellowship. I'm say this, I'm believing. I'm believing. And expecting an impartation tonight. Lord knows what I need. His Holy Spirit's here. Spirit to make a deposit in my life. In my, life. My, life my life will never be the same because I'm filled with the precious Holy Spirit. Precious Holy Spirit. Rivers, Rivers of, living of living water flow through me. Flow through me. Amen. Amen. You may make your way back to your seat, but don't sit down just yet. <laughs> Did you get one of these on the way? What, what did the greeters tell you when you walked in? Did they tell you anything? Yes, who, who walked in this church and no greeter told you anything? Nobody told you anything? What door did you walk through? Okay, who was walking there? No one told you anything. What door did you walk through? Uh-oh, same door. Who's working that first door? Pick your head outside the wall. <laughs> They're running now. I ain't going to say. Come on, man. We got to follow. You got your paper? What were they supposed to tell you? What would they tell you? Time it's time for your reward. Monday morning, the Spirit of the Lord, it was our, the service was already over, and we, we, we continued to worship after the first Monday morning camp meeting service, and the Spirit of God came upon Apostle. And this, this word, I recorded it, and I typed it out, and want to make sure I put it in your hands. Now, uh, the Bible says that do not uh, uh, spurn uh, the prophecy. Uh, uh, the Amplified says, do not, do not 
spurn. Do not let it depreciate. Get on this side because uh, if not, it won't catch the Wi-Fi as good. Do not depreciate prophetic uh, revelations, instructions, or warnings. So you can't let it depreciate in your life. And that's why I, I put it, I didn't want to just tell you. I wanted to put it in your hands where you can have it with you. You can put it in your Bible. You put it somewhere and, and meditate this. Amen. Expect this. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. 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 Ready, read. This is a time of reward, saith the Lord. All the time you have spent seeking my face, it will begin to come to pass. Like you are running a race, for it will come swiftly to your doorstep, and you will have enough understanding to open the door. And I will come in and do whatever needs to be done, for you love me, and I love you, and my love is bigger than your love, Therefore, I'm going to wrap your love in my love, and our love will become one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, because sometimes God tries to do some things in our life, and we, oh, I don't know, I don't know, but see, now, look, he gave you a word. You're going to have enough understanding. This is God. You're going to open that door of opportunity, that door of favor. And so, and so I want you to know this is a time of reward. I told you we were in a season of harvest. We, I mean, a season of rewards, a se- well, I mean, just a season of overflow. And so I want you to know, come on, say this, my time, my time of, reward of reward has come. Has come. Many of you have been battered. Many of you have been scorned. But you will receive the reward of your humility, the reward of your faithfulness, the reward. And it's going to overtake you swiftly. My God. Amen. So I want you to expect this, believe this, meditate this, and put it somewhere where you can have it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, b- before I continue, uh, let me just say this. Uh, 5,114 days I've been married to this fine... <laughs> We celebrate 14, 14 years today, and if you multiply 14 times 365, you ain't going to come up with that number. Why will you not come up with that number? Leap year. You got leap years in there, so you got to add those up if they meant something to you. And, and I just want to tell you, sweetheart, uh, the day I met you, I knew I was going to marry you. But what I didn't know, what I didn't know was how much I could learn to love another person. And what I didn't know was how much weight and value you were going to hold in my heart. And so I want you to know I love you with everything. And so happy 14-year anniversary. I love you. All right. Well, welcome to Faith Christian Fellowship. Greet your neighbor. Let them know it's good to see them in the house of God this evening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, uh, we're going to start a series. Now, because you hear this series and maybe you don't have a kid, uh, you don't plan on having kids, don't, don't opt out of Wednesday night Bible study. Because I'm always, the Holy Spirit's always going to give you some nuggets in there just for you help you, uh, uh, benefit you. Amen? So, uh, just know that. Parenting, faith, fear, or forsaken? Which one is it? Are you parenting out of fear? Are you parenting out of faith? And when I say faith, I'm talking about the faith of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Or have you just forsaken parenting, meaning... Uh, I just let my kid do whatever I want. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna hit this, and this, I believe it's gonna be a blessing. How many y'all ready for this? Amen. I'm ready for this. <laughs> Somebody said no. <laughs> the teenager said no. I got my mom right where I want her. <laughs> Not after tonight, and after this series. It's a, what's it called? A uh, 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 
what's it when the powers shift? What's it called? A revolution? It's a revolution, right? Yeah. Listen, during this Bible study on parenting, this, before I begin, I want you to understand I've been studying behind some amazing men and women of God that have amazing families. They've overcome obstacles. And they address some sensitive issues that may be sensitive to you. Okay? Okay? Don't get offended. Oh, he's just talking to me. No, I'm not. But if the shoe fits, baby, wear it. You know, I mean, that's all you got to do. Don't get unsettled. Don't let your foundation crack, shift. Nothing we say. Let, 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 let me put it to you like this. You know, nothing I say or teach, you don't got to apply if you don't want to. But just like you don't have to have those results from it. You know, so... Uh, so when you hear, uh, uh, so if, if you hear from someone, well, I'm not going to do that, cool. But now, now but see, I'm now going to look at your life in all areas of life if we're, if we're, if we're cool. Yeah. If me and you are, are road dogs and I hear this come out of your mouth, well, I, I don't got to do that. I'm not going to do that. Look, no, that's fine. But now I'm going to begin to observe. Yeah. Yeah, and do I... My family, my spouse, do we want results like that? Oh, okay, okay. okay I'm, I'm, I'm going to help you in a little bit. See, because what may be okay for you may not be okay for your spouse. Okay, let me put it to you another way. Maybe you're okay living from check to check. Maybe you're okay depending on other people. Maybe you're okay compromising what you say you believe in because of situations or circumstances, but are they? And see, if they're not, you know what you're going to find? Turmoil in your house. See, what may be okay for you may not be okay for them. And so that's why you and I got, write this down, I got to be principle driven. The principles of the word of God, that has got to drive my life. I can't be preference driven. I can't be preference driven. I got to be principle driven. Listen, listen. Preference driven people have the convenience of bailing out of godly principles when they feel like it. Because the situation changes, so now uh, I don't got tithe. No, no, no. See, I'm principle driven, not preference driven. See, because the situation in my life changes, well, uh, I, I, I don't got to uh, read my Bible. No, see, I, I'm principle driven. See, because situation, certain situations happen, well, uh, I don't got to forgive them. No, 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 I'm, I'm going to forgive them anyway. Are, are y'all hearing me, church? See, so let me say it again. Preference driven people have the convenience of bailing out of principles when they feel like it. These are, these are what you call conditional believers or situational believers. Can, can I haul at you singles real quick? That's why, you, that's why the Bible tells us, that's why the Bible tells you can't be unequally yoked. You see, you see, you see, so now, see, I can't be under, light and darkness don't mix. See, that's a principle. See, but, 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 but if, 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 if I'm single, and yeah, they're not saved, but they look good. See, a preference-driven person will say, well, I'll just get them saved. No, that, that may be the truth. Maybe God does use you to lead them, but in the meantime, we're just going to be friends. We ain't even going to court. Why? Because we're unequally yoked. I wish, I, I wish I had someone to talk to this morning. See, so, see, be, because, because, see, so let me just give you, uh, Dr. Forge gave us three PowerPoints. I'm going to give them to you. Here's how you know, listen, listen, here's how you know, are they even worthy of you? Number one, they must love God more than they love you. Number one, they must love God more than they love you. What does that mean? God's first in their life. And it's evident. 
And the same for you. You, how do you know you're ready? You love God more than you love them. Number two, they love you more than they love themselves. And then number three, they have to love themselves though. It's rough being with someone that don't love themselves. They just, they just feel sorry for themselves all the time, want you to feel sorry for them all the time, and it's, it's just a headache. But if they, if, they, if they love themselves more than they love you, they'll have no problem hurting you and then turn around telling you, but I love you. No, if you love me, you, I, I wish I had a church to talk to this morning. And then so here's a good, here's a good you, know, you know what a barometer is? It measures. Okay. A thermometer measures the temperature. A, 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 good, a good meter, a good barometer for you to use is, is, is this person, is this, is this even the right person? How has your relationship with God changed since you started? Is your relationship with, ever since you got around them, is your relationship with God increasing or is it decreasing? If, if it's decreasing, it's not from God. Because anything God sends you is going to increase, especially in the relationship with him. See, because now you got light and light. Light plus light equals more light. Light plus darkness, that's a negative. You see? Now it means to take away. Now maybe, now listen, maybe they are the right one, but it could be just the wrong timing. Could be. They just need to get around God some more. They need to fall in love with him first. That way they'll probably know how to love you. Or you need to fall in love with God first so you'll know really how to love that person and what God's expecting with this relationship. That's why God said in his word, he said uh, through the apostle Paul, he said, man, look, it's not commandment, but hey, if you can stay single, stay single. Yeah. <laughs> why? Why? Because now he said, now you have to please God and now you have to please that person. No, there's no way around it. And then you get the super spiritual folk that, well, I'm just going to play God. But God's not ignoring this relationship like you may be. No, he's not going to ignore our marriage. No, no, you, you hooked up. You got to learn how to please this person. And the best principles to learn how to please him, you're going to find. God knows more about marriage than you and I put together. Covenant marriage. And so, the be- and so, I'm telling you, your relationship with God is number one. Amen? So, uh, like I said, just remember. So, before I begin, I'm going to make a charge to the men. Do y'all mind if I make a charge to the men? Yes, sir. Come on. Ladies, do you mind if I talk to the men real quick? Yes, you don't mind at all? Okay. Yes, no, what's Reggie? You, you say, okay, okay, I got you, got you. <laughs> <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. Parenting. Faith, fear, or forsaken? Are you parenting out of faith? Are you parenting out of fear? Or is parenting just been forsaken in your home? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. Let's read together. Ready? Read. Fathers, do not... Okay, y'all ain't there yet. Let me wait. I was the only one reading, Marty. What happened? Y'all, y'all waiting for the screen? No, man. You got to bring your textbook. That's like going to school without your book. You can't come here without your Bible or your phone with all the translations in the world. <laughs> come on. You got it? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. Ready? Read. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger. But bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Um, In the 1990s, Time Magazine had an article on fathering. And in this article, they're they're talking about how in the the 1830s, all the information, Mr. Peter, was written uh, to the fathers about parenting. All the information uh, uh, about families was directed to the father. 
Isn't that amazing? Then the Industrial Revolution came, and fathers were less in the home. So now, fast forward to the late 1900s, and almost all literature is now directed to mom. And as the decades have passed, we have arrived to a time where it is, for, to no surprise, that the father is absent from the home. As a matter of fact, they're almost surprised if the father is in the home. But then when the father is home, it seems he's still absent from the home. And so today, all information is pretty much written to mom. And, and now dad, father, is basically asked to be an assistant mom. Be mom's assistant. Instead of the strong, loving leader God called him to be. Oh, Jesus, come on. Most everything that society expects today for the man to be assistant mom. When he was called to be the strong, loving leader. Think about all the shows that you watch today. The dad is made to be a dim-witted idiot that doesn't know anything and his answer is and some of y'all don't want to say anything because that's your answer at home <laughs> ask mom I don't know uh, I don't know <laughs> amen now I, 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 want, I want you to I remember the shows we used to watch. Y'all remember Growing Pains? Why did I bring that show up? She had a crush on the dad. The Seavers? He was a strong dad. He always had counsel and love and training and discipline. You ain't going to do that here. Huh? What was the other one? Was Michael J. Fox. Family ties, another strong dad. These, we're talking 80s now, where the dad was actually involved. Huh, right? Y'all see what I'm talking about? Now think about today's shows. In the Bible, in the Bible, it isn't mothers don't provoke your children. It isn't parents don't provoke your children. But fathers don't. Huh? So the moral responsibility, now understand, write down this statement, the moral responsibility of what's happening in the home is to the father and he is usually silent. I'm tired. Ask mom. I don't know. The moral responsibility of what is happening in the home is to the father and he is usually silent or absent before i move on one more second can we give it up for all the single parents in the house come on come, stand to your feet stand to your feet and come on stand to your feet and give all our single parents a round of applause because I know it is not easy raising a son, raising a daughter, or raising both when one of the others have opted out of the relationship. Now, now, hold on, don't sit down yet. Now give it up for all the single moms. Because for a mom, that load was not supposed to be on a woman. The load was supposed to be on the man, and then a lot of men today, when, when they can't take the heat, tuck their, their tail between their legs and run. But come on, we're, 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 we're declaring this a new day. I said we're declaring this a new day. Men are going to rise up and take their place in their home. Men are going to rise up and be the men of God that their families need for their home. Amen? Glory to God. I'm excited now. Let's sit down. Let's get to work. Jesus. So this will be, we're going to have many as this series goes out. And it ain't going to be too long. 
but we are going to have many key uh, verses, uh, foundational verses that we are going to use to stand on and, and, and build upon. But this is one of them right here, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor, uh, you, re, can you read that for me? Ready, read. Amen. Now listen, this verse right here. <clears throat> oh, glory. How many of you thought making your kids memorize that verse was going to make them obey? <laughs> your kids could quote it in their sleep. You made them memorize it. Huh? Uh, kids, children are given one direct. I mean, this is directed to them. The children in your home, right? Children are given one direct command addressed to them. Obey. Parents, fathers, how serious are you in helping them obey? How serious are you in helping them obey? How serious are you in helping them fulfill the command given to them by God our Father? See, God right here is not talking to you. Right here, he's talking to them. Children, Jordan, Jaden, Malachi, Josiah. What was his name, son? Dorian. What's your little girl's name? Zoe. Absolutely, Zoe. My mind went blank. Isla. God said, hey, Isla, obey your parents, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is, how do they know how to honor? Unless someone teach them. How will they know how to honor Unless someone teach them what honor is, and then if they walk in dishonor, okay, let me show you, this is what you just did was dishonorable. Let me help you. So how serious are you at helping them obey? Psalm 127, verse 3 through 5, says this. Uh, Psalm 27, verse 3 through 5. Are you all right? You all good? Behold, children are a gift of the Lord. They are a yes. gift. They are a yes. Okay. <clears throat> if I give you a gift, that means I had to go out and purchase this gift or make this gift. In those moments while it's in my possession, guess whose it is? It's mine. And now I turn around and I give you this gift. Yes? The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. How blessed is a man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be ashamed when they speak with their enemies in the gate. So God says, I have a purpose for them. They're a gift. They're a reward. And I got a purpose for them. And so I'm trusting you, parent, mom, dad, to shape them. And to, 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 to one day you will shoot them out as a warrior shoots his bow and arrow. That they will go and conquer. They will go and overcome. They will go and be able to be the man, a woman of God they were called to be. Because you shape them. Amen? Amen? So you are you and I are stewards to help them in this process. They are under our care. Amen. 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 Many, many think they are uh, there 
that many think they are doing what God calls them to do as they help, help the old oh, Jesus to help their child chase the American dream and not God's dream. Oh, Jesus, man, come on. Write this down. Am I helping? Am I more focused on helping my child chase the American dream before chasing God's dream? Are, are you seeing this tonight? Am I, am I, am I, am I, am my involvement in my child's life? Is it so they can be successful or so they can be holy first? No, see, I mean, no, I'm not taking nothing away from that. But see, the, the, the first reason God, God gave me my child was for his dream, not the American dream. I'm going to give you all the scriptures in a second, but just let me, let me set you up. Are you seeing this? So, so what is your parenting motivation? Okay. This is where we're going to get the three F's real quick. Is it out of faith? Am I teaching my child out of faith? First Thessalonians chapter 2. Verse 11 and 12. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. I'll let you get there. It's Bible study. And don't expect to get everything tonight. We got so much to cover. Uh, and so I want to go slow because I want to make sure you get it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You got verse 11. As you know, we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father does his children. As a father does his children. Father, comfort them. Charge them. Exhort them. We'll go over all these another day. This one's not the focus today, though. We're going to keep going. Next verse, 12, right here. Listen to this. That you would walk worthy of God. 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 So one thing I always tell my kid, okay, well, what, 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 what you want to do, is that worthy of God? Come on. Where's God in this? Come on. Is that worthy of God? Is it, Come on. you see what I'm saying? Is that worthy of God? Oh my goodness, I'm, I'm, I'm getting some things, I'm getting some things. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Is it worthy of God? Romans 8, listen to this. Romans 8, so, so is my... Is my, see, I want, I want to make sure I'm raising them in faith. Romans 8, 28 and 29. When you got it, say amen. amen. Romans 8. Amen. Boy, I got so many scriptures. Why do I do so many scriptures? And we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God. To them that are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed, to be conformed to the image of his son. Whoa, 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 whoa. That he might be the firstborn of many brethren. That we be conformed to the image of his son. So the God's goal is that they look like Christ. God's goal is that they will look like Christ. And so he said, I'm going to put them in your care. In the midst of this heathenistic world that is going to try to manipulate them and corrupt them to chase after money, to chase after other things before they chase after God. Now, I'm not taking away from that. But the first goal, because number one, see that, oh, jeez, okay, 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 thank you, Holy Ghost. Okay, you, you know, uh, what was it? Hosea 4? Is it verse 6? Hosea 4 and 6. Uh, for my people perish. My people perish for lack of... My people perish for lack of knowledge because you priests rejected knowledge. Well, guess who's the priest in your home? That single mom 
or that dad. And if that dad or that single mom is rejecting knowledge, then God's people, God's gifts, God's rewards, the ones he put in your care are now being destroyed by this world, by the enemy, because you and I, either we rejected knowledge or we forsook the parenting. Because I'm chasing after my dream. Come on. Watch out. Are y'all, are y'all seeing this tonight? Are y'all seeing this tonight? Yes. But this is good. Okay, see, so, so now watch this. So the goal is to be like Christ, right? Or... Am I teaching them out of fear? Am I parenting out of fear? Fear that, they, that my child won't like me if I don't let them do whatever they want. Fear that they're going to throw a fit. Fear that I'm not going to be the cool mom, the cool dad. Oh, Jesus. Can, can I go there? And so some, some parents, they'll put their child in everything because they have a fear that they'll be overlooked. Wow. They got a fear that I don't want them to be underdeveloped. I don't want them to get left behind. Ooh, come on. Come on. Or they got a fear, what are the other parents going to think? Are y'all, are y'all seeing this tonight? There was this one basketball player. I don't know if any of you ever heard of him. I think it's MJ, yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael Jordan. Is that his name? Yeah. It's pretty good. You know, he, could, he couldn't make the varsity team at the beginning. Come on. He got overlooked. Come on, come on. Come on, Ooh, come on Pastor. Yes, sir. But see, when it, if it's God's will, uh-huh. oh, no, ain't no one going to be able to stop him. When it's God's will, ain't no one going to be able to stop them if it's God's will. And I, and see, oh, see, oh, man, I don't know, I don't know. See, what's the goal? See, God, in my home, what's the goal? Am I training them? Am I raising them up and training them that they are the all-star? Or am I training them to seek the all-star? I don't know if y'all understand that. Am I training them and making them think they're the all-star? Everything revolves around them. Or am I training them everything revolves around him? Oh, y'all, let me get... See, are you training your child? Everything revolves around them. Whatever they want, they got it. Whatever they want to be in, we're going to do it. Or am I training them that everything revolves around him? See, baby, you got to understand, you are not the all-star. We follow the all-star. And if he decides to help you become an all-star, you're gonna, and no one's going to stop you. It's going to be because of him. Are you seeing this? See, am I, oh, I, 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 I wait, I had it written down. Am I training them that they're the all-star at the same time, train them to neglect the all-star. Genesis, uh, Genesis 11, watch this. Look, what, look, what, look uh, I love the word. Genesis 11. We're going to come back, I'm, and, and I'm actually just going to touch on these scriptures. I'm not even going to stay here long. Genesis 11, I'm actually almost finished. You got Genesis 11? Verse 13, listen to this. It shall come about because of time. I just have a little bit of time left. I'm going to go to 11, and I'm going to skip down to 18 through 21. Is that all right? I'm going to do it anyway. It shall, come to, it, it, it shall come about if you listen obediently to my commandments that I'm commanding you today. Listen, love the Lord your God. Love the Lord thy God. Serve him. Right? We serve him. Sounds just like Jesus. Love the Lord thy God with all the heart, 
All that soul, all your mind. Love the Lord your God. Serve Him with all your heart and all your soul. Serve Him with all your heart and all your soul. I got to make sure I'm not teaching my child that they serve their desires with all their heart, all their soul before they're serving God with all their heart and all their soul. God's got to be, come on, say that. God's got to be first. See, once again, there's nothing wrong. I'm not taking away from dreams. But we got to put things in their right place or I'm always going to get stuck or I'm going to set some other things up for failure. Come on. Look what he said. At, uh, go down to verse 18. You shall, therefore, look, look, impress these words of mine on your heart and your soul and you'll bind them as a sign on your hand. And they shall be as frontals on your forehead. You shall teach them to your sons. Ta talking of them when you sit in your house. When you walk along the road. When you're going down the street. He said, talk about this. Now just, now just, now just hold on, hold on, okay. God, okay, hold on. Let me just keep reading because I don't know if I can do this. Yes, I can. Talking to them when you sit down at your house, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you rise up, you shall write them on the doorposts of your house, on the gates, so that your days and the days of your sons may be multiplied on the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give them. Wow. He's showing us how to have long life, fruitful life, and how to help our children have long life and a fruitful life. But what are we talking about in the car? Are we talking in the car? What are we talking about when we sit down at the house? Are we talking when we're in the house? No, sir, just what, 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 what are we doing? See, right here, he gave us a clear-cut commandment. Teach them this. Talk about this. Why? How many of you want your kids to live long? Or how many of you want to bury your kids? Not one. Not one of us want to bury our sons or daughters, right? And God just gave you a secret. He just gave you a secret on how to multiply their days on the earth. Has the enemy been helping you and I neglect Giving them this pill. Because, I mean, I, I got to put Josiah in football. And then on the way home, that's how we talked about how awesome he did. You see, oh, no, you, see, you see what I'm saying, Lindsay? I got to remind him where that strength came from. I got to remind him where his stature, it didn't come from me, you know. I got I to remind him to give God, I got to give, give the right person the, the praise. I got to let him remind, remind him who, 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 who made this possible. Are you seeing this? Now, we're, 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 and I'm going to show you later, we, we, we got, obviously, we got to be the biggest cheerleader. Someone say, teach them this. Teach them this. That's what he said. And didn't he say that in Ephesians? Teach them to obey and honor. It will go well with them. How many of you want it to go well for your children? Amen. That they'll live long. Amen. But how many of us can say, and I've been doing what it takes for them to have that? <laughs> oh, man, this is, come on now. Let, you know what? Go to Genesis 18. Go to Genesis 18, because cursed is a man that hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham come upon him. Absolutely. 
But look, but Abraham did something for them blessings. Oh, Jesus. Come on, talk to me. So I, 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 if, if the blessing of Abraham coming upon me, I want to know what are some of them blessings. Huh? Look at Genesis 18. I got to hurry. I only got five minutes left. The men, uh, verse 17. The Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? Since Abraham will surely become a great mighty nation. In him all the nations of the earth will be blessed. For I have chosen him that he may command. I've chosen him. And other says, I know him. I know Abraham. I know him. There it is. I know him. I, I, know, I know Abraham. That's a good dad right there. I know Abraham. That's a good dad right there. He will command his children, his household. In other words, everyone in his house. See, you may not be my, my child, but if you live in my house, huh, Jericho? You're going to go by my rules. His household. They shall keep the way of the Lord, do justice, judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he spoke about him. See, God, my goodness, this even releases some blessings. Some words that God has spoke over you, some of, it is, some of it is released easier when he sees you commanding your children and your household after him. And see, so, so that's why the enemy will try to get you to neglect this, because now he can hold your blessings back. What's going on? I feel like we're stuck. Hold on, wait. Let, what have I been doing with the gifts I've been given? See, you start looking at the gifts in you. You start to come on, think about it. Think about it. What have I been doing with the gifts I've been given? Have I been prophesying? Word of knowledge? Or Abakaya? And sometimes we're neglecting the very gift. And just letting them do whatever. They up there watching God knows what. Can, can, can I help y'all real quick? And y'all she ain't gonna get mad at me. You know, the the world was smart enough to put ratings. On shows for a reason. The world was smart enough to put ratings on shows for a reason. The world said, Hollywood said, PG, this is good. Parental guys suggested it'd be okay. PG 13, we recommend, the world recommends they be at least 13 to watch this show. The world then says, this show is restricted from anyone 17 and below. The world, Hollywood said, this show, this movie's restricted. We restrict it. And then the golly parents said, no, you go ahead and watch it. And they went, where do you get this stuff from? And you slap them because they, well, no, I mean, surely they didn't slap them. And they're in shock because they're like, but you let me see this. And children are a sponge. They imitate. We're gonna, I'm, getting, I'm getting to my next week's. And, see, and God said, I put them in your care for them to sponge and get what you allow, what you do. Can I give you a quick key? It's, 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 it's for next week, but can I give it to you now? See, discipline. When we think discipline, we, what do we think? Right? When you hear discipline, that's the first thing you think. Los fajasos. The chancla. Or the gancho. Ever, anyone ever get the hanger? That, that sturdy one, not the weak one. That one's like, where'd that come from? Or the remote control. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that. Don't look back at your mom. Her mom, Sylvia, sitting behind. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just playing. Look. Or the, or the, see, back then, we didn't have plastic bottles for the babies. There were the glass bottles. If I didn't want to go get Mark a bottle, that glass bottle just, shoot. Whoa. You better go get that bottle. But see, no, discipline is training. It's training in the Lord. Uh, 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 and then instruction uh, is, admonition is, okay, write this down. Discipline 
is what's done to them. What's shown to them. Instruction is what's said to them. See, the, 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 think about training. It's okay. Think about okay. You do. Uh, you said you do jujitsu training. How long could you just teach me jujitsu by just telling me? Not long. The best way is going to be to show me. The best way you're going. We're going to teach our children is to show them. They're going to be as lazy as you are. Be as lazy as I am. Handle your money the way I handle my money. Worship God the way I worship God. Serve God the way. See the way I said, that's how I want you to serve God, son. See, I see God, that's how I want you to see God. You see what I'm saying? Okay. I got, I got to close. I got to close. I got to close. So, so, so God said, I, I know Abraham. He's, he's going to show his children and his household. So I'm going to release some things into his life. Or, last but not least, have you forsaking parenting, period. I mean, I just, 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 just don't care. I'm going to give you a bunch of statistics next week uh, on the results of the different, the different types of homes that children are raised in. But have you just forsaken? I, I mean, I just don't care. It just, or, or just didn't know and didn't care to find out. Or just didn't know and didn't have anyone ever give you the information. That's why we're here. Amen. So make sure you come back next week. Bring somebody else. He's, man, they know, man, having a hard time with their, 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 their children. I'm, we're gonna, we're, they, they will not leave here without the knowledge and information they need to be able to help make their home successful. A happy home and help give their children long life and it will life will go well for them if you haven't listen if you haven't done anything to teach them or lead them besides take them to church besides well I provide I, I, I put food, food on the table clothes on the back and shelter over the home that's the bare minimum that's expected of you Anybody can do that. That's the bet. You're doing the least that you were asked to do. You're doing, you're doing the bare minimum. That's it. Anybody can do that. Maybe you may do it a little bit better, but I, so, some people would rather have their, 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 their parents involved than just the latest gadget. I gave you those statistics Sunday. Was it? No, Monday night. Monday night. Uh, if you haven't done anything to teach them or lead them beside take them to church or provide, ask couples if that's all it takes to have a successful marriage. Ask couples. Is that all it takes to have a successful marriage? Provide and let's go to church. No, it takes work. Yeah, I mean, you got to work on your marriage. We got to work on our parenting. Just like it takes work to have a successful marriage, 14 years don't just happen. And that, but we actually been together, you know, because you count the years you're living in sin. 18 years, but 14 years straight. Straight. No breaks. Come on. Come on. It, and I tell you, it's been work. Boy, it's some work. And I've been to church them whole 14 years. Come on, come on. And it didn't take just church. Come on, Pastor. It took work. It took it, me took me being involved. It took her being involved. See, so you just bringing your kid to church and providing for them is not gonna make is not gonna make this successful. And so you gotta you, you gotta ask for forgiveness, Amen. repent, and let's make some repairs in our parenting. My, I'm, I'm talking myself too. I gotta make some repairs. 
Miss Sanders, I see some stuff. Okay, uh-huh, uh-huh, I'm good. Okay, yep. Get involved in the expectation God has for us. And just because others don't want to get involved, that don't mean, well, well, well they're going to do it. They're, they're all right. Wait a few years. You remember Eli the priest? Remember Eli? Eli was a great man of God. Eli raised, mentored Samuel. Samuel was one of the most amazing prophets and priests in the Old Testament. He anointed King David. He anointed Solomon. I mean, not Solomon, but King David. He anointed Saul. But the very first king that God ever chose. I mean, Samuel was, was amazing, wasn't he? And Eli raised him. But what he, did, what he did in Samuel, he failed to do in his own kids. What he did with Samuel, he failed to do with his own that were in his house. Because he thought for some reason, they're just going to get it. And he let them do whatever they wanted to do. Even in the house of God. Just do whatever. And it ended up coming to his whole family's destruction. See, the years may go by and all oh, that good. Okay, wait. God's not pleased with that. And the favor just comes. He don't bring the devastation, but the favor pulls up. Come on. It's time that we, we, we don't let the enemy of the world have our children. And especially you men. I'm charging you men. We're going to get more involved. Can I give you this, the last statistics, and we'll pick up tithes and offerings and we'll be dismissed? They did a study. Listen to this. They did a study with two-year-olds. How many know two-year-olds are, the, that's the most funnest age when they're two? Yes, they're horrible. But that's, I mean, they're just, ah, oh, you just, man, you know, they're running, they run funny, you know. It's just, it's just they're just fun. You know, they're past the teething you know, crying, and just, just fun. She's two, three, limbs, perfect, perfect. So they did a study on two-year-olds. And what they did was they mic'd them up to see the significant communication and time spent with the child, Shalita. And what they did, though, they waited a month, so that way the, the novelty the, the, uh, of just, you know, oh, the mic, we got to pretend. But after a month, you know, everything went back to normal. After the study was done, you know what they found? The average amount of attention and significant, no, the average amount of significant time spent with a two-year-old was from the father. Are you ready for this? 37 seconds a day. Not just, you know, they, they didn't count, you know, hey, son, how you doing? But I'm talking about significant time spent. Holding, talking. 37 seconds a day. Fathers, what's your child's favorite color? What's their favorite toy? What's their favorite game? Have you ever played it with them? And then one thing, and we're going to get there later. I'm just going to skip ahead because I just... One thing that is needed is physical contact. A hug. A kiss on the cheek. And especially... Listen, if you have daughters, little girls, them girls need to know that they can have physical contact and it not be sexual. They need to know I can be held, I can be hugged, and I'm not groped. They need to know that another man can hold me and it not be sexual. It doesn't have to be sexual. The hand that had to reach for somewhere that he knows that, that she feels comfortable in your arms. And I know it can be, it can be you know, they start, they start to develop and they, they, but no, you got to hold them. A true story, uh, uh, 
uh, this, 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 this man, his daughter goes off to college and, and he was very, you know, very uh, 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 um, affectionate. And she goes to college and, and she calls him on the phone and she's gone a couple weeks and she calls him crying. Well, she, he, well he, she, she talks to mom, but then she gets on the phone with dad. Hey, daughter, how you doing? And she just begins to cry. He said, what's the matter? She said, Dad, I just, I just need you to hold me. She, I just, I just, she, and he was like, man, I wish I could do it. She said, no, you don't understand. I need you to hold me. I miss your hugs. I miss your kisses. I, mi- I just need, I need that affection that I got from you. Praise God for mom. But there's something about that affection from dad. She knew, she knew what physical contact, right physical contact from a man was like. Not just someone looking to score. You got to teach them godly physical contact. Amen? We'll get to all that later. Did y'all get anything tonight? Father, we thank you, Lord, for tonight. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your presence. If you're here tonight and you've never, you said, man, Pastor, I, I got to be honest with you. I'm not looking at what you've said. I, I don't think I'm a very good per- parent. That's okay. You can start making changes today. That's the amazing thing with mercy and grace follows you everywhere. And so come on, let's, let's pray this. Pray, say, Father, I want you to forgive me. I haven't been a very good parent. But I know I can do better. With the help of your Holy Spirit, I know I can do better. Father, I repent. I turn from my ways of parenting even the world's ways. The world's ways. And, I and I make that step tonight. And I receive and accept. And I receive and accept. Embrace. Embrace. Enforce. Enforce. Your, ways Your ways of parenting. Raising this, precious gift Raising this precious gift that you've given me, you've given me. With, the help of your Holy Spirit. with the help of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Jesus name I pray. Amen. Now, if you're here tonight and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord of your life, listen, the Holy Spirit comes after you, receive, you, you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If that's you tonight, I want you to raise your hand. Pastor, I need to receive Jesus. If you've never prayed the salvation prayer in tonight's that day, it doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. It, it, it means you believe Jesus is the Son of God, died on the cross for your sin. If that's you and you need to pray that prayer, I want to pray with you. If that's you, can you just raise your hand right there where you're at, Pastor? That's me. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If that's you, just right there where you're at. Just can, I can see, so I can see your hand, and I can pray with you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for everyone here tonight. I bless them in Jesus' name. And I thank you for helping each and every single one of us. Mm. Hallelujah. <laughs> In Jesus' name, amen. How awesome. Y'all give God a hand clap. You may be seated. And we're getting ushers. You may serve the people. We're going to bring our tithes to our seats. Sweetheart, can you bring... Our tithe is up here on the on the pulpit. Father, we thank you, Lord. As we bring our tithe so our seed, we do it with faith, love, and obedience. I thank you, Lord, because our tithes and our offerings are doing mighty things in this church, in the kingdom, and in this area. I thank you, Lord, the people are seeing it. And Lord, I pray everyone that sows into this ministry receive a harvest of 30, 60, and 100 fold. That they know they're giving into good ground. Father, I bless the giving this morning. 
this evening. All the, get, all the finances that are left in their house, may it be, may you breathe on it, multiplied in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. The money, it just keeps on coming.